In this video, we'll take a look at how you can use the Acronis bootable media remotely to manage the recovery of a machine. The sort of normal way to use a bootable media is, is managing it locally through the, the UI of the machine it's connected to. In this case, we're going to focus on the situation where you register it with the management console. In this case, it's to the one we've got here in the background in the US5 data center. Then you can see the local IP address here of the machine with the bootle media. And then that corresponds to the IP address up there. And if we select this bootle media entry here, we can select a backup that we want to recover. Let's go down here and pick this one and initiate the recovery. We'll do entire machine. We could actually do uh, specific files and folders as well, but this will initiate entire machine recovery. So now it's ready to restore both disks to that, uh, to that machine. I could go in here and select just one of the disks if I wanted to. In this case, I'll just leave it the way it is. I'll start recovery. And move this out of the way. And this is a final confirmation that it's going to start the recovery. And come back in here. It prompted us about leaving that panel, but it doesn't, at this point, it doesn't matter because it's it started the recovery. And that will proceed. And look in here, it's not immediately obvious here what's what's happening, but if you come in here, say manage the machine locally, and then go over to tools or navigation log, then we can see uh, see the, the progress of this recovery here. And this can be done to a machine that maybe was being backed up previously or to a machine that has nothing on it. The, the amount of time that it will, will take to do the recovery depends partially on what the machine has. So if you're just trying to roll back to an earlier recovery point, there may only be a subset of the data that needs to be restored to that machine. If you're restoring it to a machine that has nothing on it, then it's going to take longer. So we'll see the progress here. You can see currently it's showing more than one hour left. That often will be adjusted as it goes along. If we come back here and take a look at some earlier recoveries that were done in the same way, uh, you can see that this one took 68 minutes. In that case, it processed uh, 68 gigs and uh, restored at uh, 41 megs per second and then this other one here was uh, was fairly similar, so it should should be about twenty to thirty minutes for for this to restore. And keep in mind that the idea for this approach is that you could manage the recovery to a machine that maybe was not bootable, had a blank hard drive, and possibly was at a site where there wasn't uh, an IT person necessarily that was there to to manage the recovery all that would be needed was to to start the machine up from the bootable media you wouldn't normally be looking at the machine when i'm here as a, as a virtual machine and the way that you would make this uh totally automatic to have the machine start up and connect to the cloud console gets back to the registration aspect so that exit that the, that's not going to affect the recovery uh, so I'd pre-registered this bootable media, but either way, uh, you do it using a registration token. And the way that you do that is in the console, select uh, add devices. This is where you have all the installers and then scroll down to the bottom and then pick generate here to generate a token. And you can set this to up to 12 months. This determines how long that token will be valid for. So setting this to uh, to a high number could you know could make sense to have this 
pre-configured as bootable media that will register with the Cloud Management Console. Uh, we do need to select a user here. Typically, you would do it uh, tied to the same user that uh, you're using to back up the machines, that, that same essentially like a service account, and then you could ignore the plan aspect for this purpose. So we're going to copy that and then put that into the bootable media here to register it. If you do want to make this completely unattended, the way you can do that is with the bootable media builder, which we'll cover in a different uh, different video. But using that, you can create a custom version of the Acronis bootable media. And then as part of that, you can add a registration token that gets built into the, the bootable media uh, so that it can start up and connect automatically to the management console. And you could also tie this concept in with having the, say, a USB stick that is plugged into a server set as the secondary uh, boot order so that it would normally boot to the hard drive. But if it doesn't, uh, doesn't boot to that, then it would fall back to the bootable media so that it would be automatically online and uh, could be managed through the Acronis Management Console. Yeah.